Hey guys, welcome to another video and in this video we're going to talk about basically mainly three airbrushes. This is the Patriot, the Chrome, and the Sotar 2020. The reason why I'm making this video because I get a lot of questions about it. So we're going to go and check out these three airbrushes because those are the ones that are mostly mentioned around our groups and our discussions in the WGC. As well, I'm going to go ahead and highlight some other airbrushes from badges that I actually use for certain different projects as well. So it's worth mentioning here. So uh, let's get at it. Pardon the uh, dirty airbrushes because I haven't had time to clean them, so I use these guys, use these guys a lot. So, Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the difference between the Chrome and the 2020 because I get a lot of questions about this, especially the pricing because at Amazon, sometimes you'll see the Soltar down at $88 for a $400 airbrush. And they that happens because Badger did not actually put a uh, minimum limit on the MSRP on this, so Amazon's taking advantage of that, which is good in for you know cases in where you guys going to buy it and stuff the chrome is usually you go find it 100 and maybe 120 maybe less again you can get these airbrushes at webairbrushes.com using the code consortium and they'll get you 40 percent off of your whole order not just the airbrush whatever you order from them so make sure you take advantage of that as well it, it includes paints and and whatever is on that website as well as parts so okay the difference, the internals of these two airbrushes are the same thing, okay? The same contraction, trigger contraptions, uh, as well as the size of the needle, which is usually uh, 0.20, and you could actually go up higher to a 0.3, depending on the needle kit uh, that you, you could additionally buy for these airbrushes. The difference between these two is the feel, okay? And this is what I try to explain to people, is the feel between these two airbrushes, because they are um, a different feel. For example, if you look here, the <coughs> trigger is longer to the tip of the uh, airbrush here as opposed to the Soltar which is closer. The trigger is also closer to the cup here. So doing this and doing all the closeness to the Soltar, it's like using an illustrator brush. This is really what it is, an illustrator brush. And it works really, really well for what we do, especially for uh, miniatures, okay? When we're doing the small little miniatures. Um, this gives you the feel of, uh, I guess the best way I've been trying to explain it is holding uh, the pen up close to the tip. Whereas the chrome um, is more towards the middle of the pencil or pen that you're using, okay? So for example, for the Sotar, a good bet is if you hold your pen in like this to write, then the best bet, and you like that feel, best bet is to get the Soltar. And if you're more up towards the center of the pen and right this way, the Chrome is probably your better bet. Personally to me, I use my Soltar way more than I use my Chrome because of that fact, okay? Because it's so close, the trigger is close uh, to the, uh, the tip here, is that when I'm spraying um, a miniature, I can actually guide it by using one of my fingers here, like down here. Like it would touch the base and then I'll do just slowly put in the details and like really write a minute detail, okay? The detailing on the brush itself is really about your trigger control, okay? Let's go ahead and really, really quickly talk about needle sizes because people often think that the smaller the needle size, the more details you're going to get. Yes and no, okay? That's part of the equation. The other equation is your trigger control as well as the type of brush that you have, that you bought, okay? It all depends, but mainly the size of the needle really is the medium that you're using through these airbrushes. The medium we use, the acrylic paints like um, Minotaur or Vallejo or P3s or Scale Color 75, um, should really be shot out of 0.3 or more. Okay, otherwise you're gonna start getting really a lot of clogging. Okay, that's where the clogging is coming from. You have to understand that because of the pigment size in these paints, um, 0.3 or higher is what is suggested usually. Now, when you get more advanced and you understand how to control the paint and how to thin it and stuff, then going down to 0.21 won't be as bad. Okay, this is why a lot of times I tell people, look, if you're just starting airbrushing, Patriot 105 is the way to go. It's a 0.5 needle. Okay, so even with our paints, it shouldn't clog as much because our paints are 
rated at a 0.3 uh, type of uh, pigment count. Okay, that's the best way I could explain it. Now, the 0.21s are really used for inks. Uh, the mil military ghost tints are great for it as well. Um, watercolors, that's what should be spraying through a 0.21. And that's why it's important to understand that I always suggest if you're going to go this high, you shouldn't be doing it as a beginning airbrusher. I mean, unless you could really, you know, unless you're one of those people that really gets it down right away, then fine. Go for the, you know, 0.21 uh, size needle. Now, that's this goes for any airbrush, not just Badger. Okay, it goes for Wada, it goes for Grex and stuff like that. The size of the needle really is dependent mainly on the medium you're using. Now, for us, if it gives you more control because of the lower me uh, needle um, size. The lower the needle size, the more dots will come out per spray on uh, the spray itself. So it gives you smoother coverage is uh, what it's all about. And especially when you're doing details, blowing at a low PSI and getting in really close, you need that type of coverage. Okay, and that's why it make that's why the 0.21 or lower type of uh, needle size is great for detailing. It's because of that. Now to say that I, I, I always tell people I can get the same details I can with the Patriot as well as much as I can with the Sotar 2020 or the Chrome. It's just easier with these two to do it. Here, you, you know, your, your range is a little more expanded. Okay, so if you're going for that, that needle thin type of line, I could do it on either or. It's just easier with these two. Okay, and again, it's all about experience and trigger control to get down to that type of level. By the time you get to that level and you understand the airbrush, you understand what the paint ratio should be and, and what everything needs to be, then really you can use any airbrush that fits well for you, that works well for you. That's why I just tell people, look, if the badger doesn't fit good for you, find another airbrush. Hold it in your hands before you purchase it. Of course, that's a little hard, but that's why going to these conventions is very nice, uh, especially if you want a badger airbrush, go to any of the conventions we're at. Adepticon, Gen Con, I believe LVO, we're going to start going every year. He went there this year. So you'll be able to pick them up and, you know, figure out the feel. How does it feel to you, right? If you go into one of our hobby rooms with, that we're running hobby events on, like LVO, come in. We'll have airbrush set up so that you could check it out and stuff, okay? Reason why, again, that I suggest if you're first time painter, you're first time airbrusher, sorry, not painter. Um, and you want to get an airbrush, get the Badger 105. It's, first of all, it's cheap. It's about $70. You might be able to find it on sale for even cheaper at Amazon uh, during those times that they decide to make it cheaper. Uh, it has a bigger needle size. You could convert it down to a 0.3, which has a 0.3 conversion right now on this brush. So again, if you're starting and you don't think, you're not really too sure about the airbrushes, go for Patriot 105. Uh, it's cheap and and it's my workhorse actually. I still use this more than any of the airbrushes that I have on this table that that you see here or you will see later on. Okay, because again, it's all about trigger control. It's all about understanding what you're doing. You do the exact same thing with the Patriot 105 than you can with the Sotar or Chrome. It's all about how easy you want to make it on yourself to do it when you get down to that level. But if you really want to take the challenge, go Sotar or Chrome and uh, that'll last you for where as long as you have it as long as you know you don't run it over with the truck because these things last pretty much forever okay sometimes you might bump the needle you might need a new needle or something sometimes you might warp uh the tip the i'm sorry the the needle uh, tip or sorry the little tip in here okay it's called something else i can't remember what it is right now uh then you would need to get a new one uh you can always buy the conversion kits to make the needle go up or uh, down and if that happens <coughs> Very important thing is that you have to change it along with the needle. If you're like, right now is a 2.21 uh, in here, a uh, needle. If I go to a 3.0, which is a medium sized needle, I believe, I will have to change out uh, the needle that's in here, the regular, which is this part that I keep dropping, as well as that needle tip in here. Okay, you have to change all three of those. You can't just put a bigger needle size in here and expect the regulator and the needle tip to actually work with that size because it's not built for that size. So that's important to remember about these Badger airbrushes. So that's it. It's all about the feel because everything is the same and it's all about where your starting level is at. Okay, if you want to take the challenge, start airbrushing with the Chrome and uh, Sotar, go for it. Just have a lot of patience and um, just keep at it, okay? But again, less frustration to go with the Patriot 05. Now, there's some other brushes that we need to talk about here because we do, or actually I do use um, in this hobby. One, I sometimes go down to this. This is really easy to use. 
It is a Point 21. It's a Vega um, Nail Air from Badger. It's light as heck. No cup. You just drop a couple of drops in here and spray. This is usually what I do with ghost tints. Okay, and when I'm really lazy and I don't want to clean out the whole cup and I only need to do a couple of, you know, small little detailed work, I would grab this, you know, quick connect it, drop a couple paints in it and I'm ready to go. Love this little thing, um, but it's good for a little pinch or just to do really small uh, work on it. Um, the other thing that a lot of people ask me about is the Renegade Velocity because if you see my older videos, this was one of my favorite brushes. Uh, this brush here is with the smaller cup. There's the bigger cup the cup that looks like this that's on here, the hopper. Um, and that goes as big here. There's two types of velocities, the um, one smaller cup and the big cup. And I love this. Again, same internals as the Silatire 2020, as well as the Chrome, okay? Because it's all part of the Renegade family, okay? So again, it's all about feel. This, um, if you look, is pretty much what the Chrome is uh, made of. Or designed from uh, this is actually the chrome is actually designed from this part of the velocity what the little background on the chrome is that uh, one of the artists uh, that works with badger created this uh, um, airbrush by taking certain elements of the other airbrush that they liked and put it together like the um, cup size uh, and the distance from the the tip to the trigger and all that stuff uh, came from the ring family and the uh, stopper, needle stopper here, came mainly from the idea of the Sotar 2020. So you got all this stuff mixed up into the Chrome, and that's how the Chrome came to be. So again, people do ask me about this because they see me use this on uh, my older videos. And this is one that I used to use all the time. And I like it mainly because of the black uh, metallic look to it. But again, this works the same as the Chrome or the Sotar. And again, I use the Sotar mostly nowadays. The other thing that you will see maybe me use once in a blue moon is uh, side feed. And this is a spirit. This is part of the Renegade, again, Renegade family. And this is a side feed, okay? It's really cool because sometimes the cup might get in the way. I'll use a side feed to point down at certain areas and stuff like that and, and spray on what I need to spray so the cup doesn't get in the way. I might have to do one of these, which you very rarely see where I have to spray up, okay? But if I need to, it's there, it's workable. Okay, mostly it's because I'm spraying down and I have to spray, spray straight down for certain jobs or something like when I'm doing some kind of um, freehand logo or something on a tank or something on top, you will often, uh, you will often see me if you come over my house, see me do this uh, with this airbrush. Love this thing. Now the other thing that we're going to talk about is the 0.5 or higher, 0.7 even type of airbrushes. This is great for massive spraying. Um, massive priming, massive base coat, meaning there's a whole bunch of models or one huge model and you need to spray all of them at a quick, you know, pace. Uh, these work great, okay, as well as for terrain. This is important too. Since I've been doing a lot more terrain, I've been using a lot more of these type of uh, airbrushes. This is a bottom feed airbrush, okay, and because I'm spraying a lot, I need a lot of paint. So what happens is you fill this baby up with paint and then you just spray. This is a point. This is the Anthem 155, Badger 155 Anthem. And uh, it has, I believe, a 0.7 needle size on it. Put the paint in the cup, you'll be spraying forever. I'm telling you, it's perfect for, you know, those big jobs, okay? So let's just say, and this is one of those geniuses that, of one of the Badger airbrushes that I really, really like. This here is the 360, the Badger 360. 0.7 uh, needle size, I believe, or it's 0.5. Either way, you could exchange the needles up and down because it's part of the, I don't know if it's part of the Anthem family, but it's part of the family of the airbrush of, of the Anthem. Okay, so the needle uh, stuff, uh, the needles are all the same. So it goes up and down, the conversions go up and down for the same as for these two airbrushes. Okay, now the, why, why is the genius? Because it acts as a gravity feed, okay, for those little drops of paint or little details that you might need to do on the terrain or just spraying, you know, uh, the highlight uh, angle for, uh, you know, mass spraying or whatever. It's good for that. But if you want to do some mass spraying, you just turn this down like that, put in the cup, put in your paint and put it in the cup, attach it, and boom, suddenly you have basically an Anthem 155, okay? So you got something like a Patriot with a larger needle on it, 
and suddenly go down to an Anthem 155 bottom feed. It's two airbrushes in one. This is one of the genius airbrushes that I love to use. And I do use this often for base coating as my base coat thing. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is actually not out yet. This is the WC Crossfire from Badger. Okay, we're, we're working with Badger on it. And this is our pistol grip uh, single action brush for those long, you know, those big works uh, like terrain and stuff like that. If you want to know more about this, links down below to maybe um, get on a, uh, you know, a news or a, a, a list so that you get notified when the Kickstarter comes up. Again, this is the WC, at least the project name right now is the WC Crossfire. And this basically is uh, this airbrush with a pist uh, trigger. Okay, you press down and it sprays and you just spray a lot of stuff. Great thing about this is you get a bunch of these bottles, you can have different colors in them, switch them out, and then just slap them in, just like a, you know, like a cartridge to a gun, right? So finish a color, uh, put the cleaner bottle in with cleaner in it, spray it out. When it's clean, pull it out, put it in the next color, Boom, you're ready to go. So this is uh, going to go out pretty soon. Uh, by the time of this, making this video, it should be you know, a month or two away, the Kickstarter. The retail price is somewhere around 160, 170, uh, something like that. So here you go, that is the latest airbrush from Badger, which is the WG Crossfire. We worked on this with him uh, to make this happen. Uh, so yeah, this would be great for spraying mass stuff, mass priming, mass base coating, doing your terrain and it makes it easier, makes it less, um, more comfortable for your finger, uh, for your hands because doing this all day to paint a two by two tile is a pain in the butt. That's it guys, I hope this video helped you understand the different Badger airbrushes as well as some of the airbrushes that are not more talked of uh, around our groups and stuff. I made this video mainly to link it to other people because it's really tiring to explain the same thing over and over again. So. I hope this video helped. So that's it guys. Thank you once again. Thank you for watching. Sub if you haven't and like if you like this video. And I will see you out there.